السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Um, I would like to uh, thank the scientific committee for inviting me for this conference and for the organizing committee for their help and guidance. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about what evidence is there for the screening of osteoporosis, when and how. Okay, our outline is going to be covered the goals of screening for osteoporosis, osteoporosis fractures, facts, and burden. Uh, we're going to touch base on the Saudi Osteoporosis Society guidelines on screening of osteoporosis. Uh, the other recommendation about screening of osteoporosis among different institutions and organizations. Um, BMD using DEXA, scan, and other modalities of, for screening of osteoporosis. And uh, osteoporosis prevention programs uh, within MOH. Okay, so why we screen for osteoporosis? There are so many reasons why we do screen for osteoporosis. One of them is early detection. As uh, if we find a patient with low BMD, we can allow timely interventions before development of osteoporosis related fractures. The other thing is assessment of fracture risk, as uh, my previous colleagues all talk about. Um, so osteoporosis screening through DIXA helps to assess the risk of fractures in individuals with reduced bone density. Um, also, we screen to prevent fractures, so identifying those at high risk of fractures, which is a common and serious uh, consequence of osteoporosis. We screen also to, for treatment planning. So screening results guide the, the healthcare workers um, to determining the appropriate course of action, either pharmacological, non-pharmacological, and we go from there. Um, monitoring response to treatment. So regular screening may be used to monitor the response to treatment and adjust intervention as needed for individual diagnosed with osteoporosis. And the most important thing also, improving quality of life. So early detection and intervention aim to improve the overall quality of life for individuals at risk of uh, osteoporosis-related complications, uh, as fractures uh, and also can lead to pain and disability and decrease in functional independence. If you want to talk about facts, uh, Dr. Uh, Prof. Jide already talked about uh, most of these slides. <clears throat> and by, as we said, 2050, to 40% of the female will have fractures in their hip, uh, and plus 310% uh, of the uh, male will be having uh, hip fractures. And um, the, the main issue here is only third of vertebral fractures come to clinical attention. So we have to be very careful because two-thirds of them, they are not there. We don't know about and 80% of people who have had at least one osteoporotic fracture are neither identified or treated for osteoporosis. So it's a main issue we are facing. Uh, for vertebral fracture also, 20% uh, of women with spine fracture, they will be having another fracture in one year. So what are the consequences of underdiagnosed and undertreating uh, osteoporosis will we'll end up with fracture. And hip fracture is one of the, uh, the main uh, consequences. So uh, loss of function and independence among survivors is the main issue uh, with uh, compromising quality of life. Um, we found also 40% unable to walk independent, so they will be dependent. 60% uh, will require assistance a year later uh, 33% will be um, uh, residing in a nursing home, long-term uh, facility. Um, mortality also will be up to 20 to from 20 to 24% in the first year after uh, first hip fracture. And 50% of people with one osteoporotic fracture will have another one. So it's a big uh, percentage. Okay. Um, here from uh, this slide from the Osteoporosis Canada, um, they found fracture from osteoporosis are more prevalent than heart attack, stroke, and breast cancer combined. If you can see in the right side of the slide, breast cancer is 22, um, more than 22,000, uh, stroke is 29, uh, heart attack is almost 50%, but fractures from different uh, sites is almost like 153,000. Uh, 
uh, fracture a year. So it's a, it's a big uh, number here. Okay. So osteoporosis, as we know, and uh, all previous colleagues talked about, is a skeletal disorder characterized by compromised bone strength predisposing a person to increase the risk of fracture. Bone strength primarily reflects an integration of bone density and bone quality. So what is bone strength? So bone strength is the, the, uh, it's a structural property. It's combining the structural property of the bone and the material properties. So structural properties like geometry, uh, size and shape, microarchitecture, uh, the cortical thickness, porosity, uh, trabecular thickness, number separations, all that uh, with micro damage and repair. And when we talk about the material properties, um, we, we will talk about the minerals, which is the bone mineral density, uh, the mineral to matrix ratio, crystal size, collagen, uh, type and cross links of the collagen, and proteins. All these bone turnover and <clears throat> will give us the bone strength. Uh, so when we define the osteoporosis, um, we're going to run that quickly, either clinically or by DEXA. Clinical definition, if there is a fragility fracture to uh, hip, spine, distal radius, proximal humerus, irrespective of BMD reading. And the densimetry definition is the T-score less than uh, minus 2.5 at spine, total hip or femoral neck, or third of the radius in postmenopausal women, or men over age 50. So who should um, undergo screening? So we follow the Saudi Osteoporosis, um, Saudi Osteoporosis Society guidelines, the 2014 and the updated uh, 2023, uh, Dr. Saleh already talked about. Um, <clears throat> so we screen all women, all Saudi women and men aged 60 and above, all Saudi women and men aged 50 to 59 years with presence of risk factors, we're gonna see in the next slide. Uh, women more than 40 years with sustained uh, trauma, fragility fracture, or younger postmenopausal women with history of fragility fracture, premature menopause less than 45 years, prolonged secondary amenorrhea, uh, those on long-term steroids, adult with primary hyperparathyroidism, and those with radiological evidence suggestive of fragility fracture, schifosis, loss of height. Here are the risk factors already Dr. Saleh talked about. Uh, so I'm not gonna go uh, over these again. Um, also Dr. Saleh, uh, he talked about the initial risk assessment using FRAX. This is the new uh, uh, recommendations, 2023, doing FRAX at the baseline and then if the patient is an intermediate risk, we can uh, do the BMB, BMD and then recalculate FRAX and treat according to the uh, recalculated risk result. Here is the FRAX, the Saudi FRAX. Um, here is the recommendation from previous osteoporosis, uh, um, I mean, society. Um, Dr. Al-Mahaya talked about American Association of Clinical Endocrinology, uh, population, as we see, postmenopausal women. They evaluate all postmenopausal women, 50 and more. Uh, need to do history examination. Uh, they also recommend FRAX, uh, and then consider BMD testing based on the clinical fracture risk profile after FRAX. Uh, when BMD is measured, use DEXA measurement, lumbar spine, as we do here, uh, hip and third of radius. And the diagnosis, uh, we already talked about, about uh, when we say this patient is osteoporotic or no. Uh, WHO, all men, uh, the population who be screened, all men and women aged 40 to 90 years, DEXA and FRAX also should be used. The American uh, Academy of Family Practice, they follow the U.S. Pre Preventive Task Force. All women, uh, postmenopausal, aged 65 years and older, and uh, if they are having risk factors, we can screen earlier. Uh, ACOG, uh, follow the same. Uh, U.S. Preventive Task Force, and the interval for screening um, more frequent than uh, every two years, They're not more. So BMD, uh, the consensus is diagnosis of osteoporosis and the evaluation of fracture risk. The rationale for that is uh, BMD is correlated with bone strength and biomechanical studies, and the BMD is predictive of future fracture in epidemiological studies. 
The challenge is selecting patient for therapy and monitoring uh, treated patient. Here is the change in bone density with age. As we see, after 50, there will be a rapid bone loss. Um, and after menopause also, um, in women more than men. So this one is uh, really clear. Uh, here is the WHO definition of osteoporosis. This slide, I think, uh, so many times repeated. Um, so severe osteoporosis is less than 2.5 with fracture. Uh, so we're using DEXA, which is the gold standard for uh, bone mineral density measurement. Uh, we have the X-ray source uh, produces two photons energies with different attenuation profiles. And then with the pinhole and uh, a fan beam, the, the X-ray will go, the detectors will detect two tissues type bone and soft tissue. Um, the estimate bone mass by measuring bone mineral contents within the area of bone tissue scanned. So it's going to be gram per centimeter square. BMD is calculated by the ratio of bone mineral content to the measured area. So this is important. So if we talk about DEXA, as Dr. Soleimani said, there are three um, uh, machines, different type of machines. Um, the machines are safe, low radiation exposure, uh, easy to use, accurate, precise, uh, normative population database, correlated with fracture risk. It's a diagnostic standard for osteoporosis, as we say, it's a gold standard. Most clinical trials are based on DEXA. Okay. So uh, basis of comparison, we, we use a T-score. So the result expressed as standard deviation score. T-score, we compare to the young normal reference mean. It's a healthy 30 years old of the same sex and ethnicity. And it's assess what is desirable and used to assess fracture risk in postmenopausal women and men 50 years and above. The Z-score compared with age and gender match control. Uh, it's assess what is expected and used to determine if bone mass is usually low and used for premenopausal women and men less than 50 and pediatric patients usually. So limitations, Dr. Saleh already uh, talked about. So uh, the measuring area is uh, gram per centimeter square, uh, bone density, not true volumetric density, which is... Uh, uh, centimeter cubic. There is an artifact introduced by bone uh, size. Uh, BMD will be changed, either increase or decrease, depending on the situation. So degenerative changes, a vertical calcification, surgical hardware, and plastic lesions may be increased BMD, uh, while um, laminectomy, osteomalacia, and uh, any myelomalytic lesion will decrease the BMD. Comparison between different DEXA machines are not valid uh, without cross calibration. So, if you do the DEXA machine in this, uh, like primary health care centers, as we have uh, in our program, you have to repeat the uh, DEXA scan, the same uh, machine, which is better. Uh, it's going to be accurate. Uh, DEXA precision depends on large extent on patient positioning and DEXA analysis. So what other modalities that we can use uh, other than DEXA or we've been used before? Uh, we talked about DEXA, uh, vertebral fracture assessment also. We mentioned that all patients has to be assessed for possible guidance in calcification, classification, and therapy in case of uh, the asymptomatic vertebral fracture. So this is, has, must, must be done. If there are uh, no dicks available to do that, so lateral spine X-ray can be done if, uh, if the vertebral fracture assessment is uh, not available. Uh, it can identify thoracic and lumbar vertebral compression fracture at point of care for BMD testing. It's cost-effective. Lower radiation exposure than radiograph, which is better, can help risk stratify, especially in moderate uh, risk patients. Uh, TBS, which is a FDA-approved software uh, evaluating bone textural qualities uh, from spine DEXA imaging. So it's a software in the same DEXA machine can read uh, the trabecular, the microarchitecture of the bone. Uh, the higher the TBS score, the more dense the bone, the less fracture risk, and vice versa. 
independent contribution to fracture risk related to bone architecture also. Uh, X-ray, which is not really uh, sensitive for that, for, but you have to have like more than 30% bone loss to, to be appear in the X-ray. There are another calcaneal ultrasound and the quantitative uh, CT and the high resolution. Uh, each one has same uh, has its own uh, uh, characteristic. Uh, CT is a higher radiation dose, so we have to be uh, careful about that. Uh, so BMD is not the sole predictor of fracture risk. 60% of women uh, with fracture have non-osteoporotic bone mineral density. So we have to be careful. Uh, I just put the frax again. Uh, we have to insist uh, each uh, uh, family physician or GPs to do the frax because it's not uh, really uh, any, uh, an ongoing practice. So we have to insist on that. Uh, recommendation frequency for repeat screening. So there, there is a debate. Uh, I just put this one because I, uh, it's not uh, the the new recommendation is one to two years. Um, but just I want to put that one just to clarify. Um, like osteoporosis, if you have osteoporosis, they they told us always do it in six months. But as Dr. Saleh said, six months is not enough. Uh, it should be one to two years till the, the, the result will be, uh, the, or the effective treatment will be shown. Um, here is the program uh, at MOH, the osteoporosis prevention program. Uh, under the older people healthcare program, there were two programs and then uh, became one program and uh, the osteoporosis is under this uh, older people program. So the aim of this program to prevent an increase in the current prevalence of osteoporosis over 10 years, and then the best control of complications resulting from osteoporosis. So we screen following the uh, Saudi Osteoporosis Society guidelines, uh, 60 and above male and female, and with risk factors, and we added the FRAX now. Um, where we screen, so we have 21 DEXA scan located primarily uh, in uh, primary healthcare centers, across the kingdom and uh, in some hospitals. Uh, we have 10 bone mineral density mobile, mobile clinic in 10 region of the kingdom. Here are the uh, bone mineral density unit. Um, so this is a national program initiated in 2018 to spread the process screening service by DEXA scan to underserved area. The operation started in 2022 by training health personnel in different regions with many workshops conducted by our staff at the program and by the operating uh, company. So a total number of 10 mobile clinics in 10 regions of the kingdom. في مكة المكرمة والمدينة وعسير وجدة والطائف وجيزان وحائل والقصيم والشرقية والتجمع الثالث هنا في الرياض. The goal is to screen 400 individuals monthly and provide them with optimal care. Here is the, uh, one of the uh, DEXA clinic. Okay, so uh, from the beginning of the program, 2017 till 2023, if you see here, the number of the number of the number of the number of the number uh, uh, almost يعني, more than 163,000 uh, uh, almost 50,000 uh, or more almost like 32% uh, osteopenia كان العدد أكبر اللي هو almost 37% percent, uh, almost 60% percent, yeah, 60,000 uh, patients uh, حالات الهشاشة كانت uh, 45 uh, thousand and more, uh, almost 29%. And all these patients, uh, they will be referred either to uh, family medicine um, to give the, the, the bisphosphonate, which is already uh, available in the uh, uh, primary health care centers, and uh, some of them will be referred to endocrinology. But the issue is the limited number of endocrinology and um, uh, highest number of patients being referred, so they will take sometimes time till they get the uh, the appointment and treatment. But the general measure will be applied to each patient uh, in the uh, primary healthcare centers, like vitamin D, calcium, 
uh, whatever else. Okay, so take home points. Um, osteoporosis can be defined, as we said, uh, presence of fragility fracture or DIXA score more, less than uh, minus 2.5 in postural involved women and men. Uh, bone strength and fracture, uh, fracture risk are correlated with BMD and other factor, clinical risk factor, bone quality. Uh, DIXA is the most useful clinical tool for measuring BMD, so we agreed on that. Um, we use the T-score for peri- and uh, postmenopausal women and men over age 50, and Z-score for individuals less than 50 and children. And screening for osteoporosis in Saudi Arabia followed the Saudi Osteoporosis uh, Society guideline for osteoporosis prevention and treatment uh, 2014 and the updated uh, recommendation 2023. Uh, thank you, everyone, and uh, uh, thank you for listening. And here is my email if there is any question. <laughs>